Hey everybody, Matt here from Matt's Movies, Music and More and my special guest Andrew welcoming you to this week's episode of What Did You Think? So if you saw our last episode you will have seen that we were talking about for comedy the 1984 classic Revenge of the Nerds and uh, to replace that movie we put in there the uh, movie that came out a year later the British comedy Clockwise with John Cleese. Okay. So that's something that I really remember fondly and stuff like that. So yeah. for today's movie, The Twister Spinner landed on Thriller. And um, to replace this movie, which we're going to be talking about, we have come up with a new one, which is the 2018 Thriller, Searching. So uh, let, me, let me see if I've got, got this right. Um, today, as we're talking about, it's a, a known as the found footage genre. So, oh, look, this is all from a camera thing. The, my perspective on running around with a camera. Yeah. And um, that's what we're talking about today. And you're telling me that our next movie in that uh, genre, we're going to be replacing one found footage. Oh, look, I'm running around with a camera thing. With another found footage. Oh, look, I'm running around with a camera thing. Best response I got to that is, I don't make the news, I just report it. All right, well, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yes. So, um, moving movie, swiftly on. Yeah, so the movie that we're going to be talking about today is the 2012 police thriller End of Watch, which is directed by David Eyre and it stars as its primary actors, we just mentioned those two, Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena. So, End of Watch. Yes, as you say, those are the primary actors and it's pretty much who we're focusing on as they play uh, Brian and Miguel, two beat cops um in the los angeles uh, police department they drive around in the police car and check up on any domestic disturbances or uh, maybe maybe a shootout but it is mostly just driving around in the afternoon any domestics going on they deal with it that sort of thing and um uh, the twist here being is that it's uh, like i said it's a found footage movie because i think brian is in college still in college as well they're both rookies, they're young, and um, he's got a film project going on or something. So he's filming everything from the perspective of a camera. He's got microphone cameras and a camcorder, and he's filming all the activities they do. And uh, this is, so it's half activities and half to just chatting in the car. It's uh, their best buds, their best friends. He's got a... Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, Brian's got a girlfriend, Michael Pena's got a loving wife and it's um, this recording their conversations as well as um, any passing comments from their superior or their colleagues uh, going, oi, what are you doing with that camera? Do you have to carry that camera all the time? But uh, life is good for them, but um, then one day they, um, I think they, they pull over someone who turns out to be i think his name is mr e big evil mr big big evil he's the leader of the local Ma mexican drug cartel and all oh, they pull over his truck and oh blimey what have they found they found a ornately bling decorated gun they've got drugs hiding in money all sorts of things and they initially this is a oh wow what a big find and one or two other minor things that make them heroes and they get very confident about this. But then soon enough, the more they investigate into this, the more the um, local FBI group, I want to say, come in and say, excuse me, sir, but you have ruffled the feathers of the local drug cartel and this will have consequences for you. They will be coming after you. Would you mind awfully please, sir, to not get in the way of our investigation and we would advise you to um, lay low and um, not do anything? I'm lying, of course. That's not how they put it. They basically tell them to F off and mind their own business. And Jake Gyllenhaal's character especially is like, uh, we're not going to let them tell us what to do. We're going to keep investigating this um, Mexican drug cartel with all the awful things that they do. And um, as time goes on, oh, blimey, do we see all the awful things they do. And oh, blimey, are Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena going to regret this? Mm. So, All the while going, oh, look, we're filming this thing now. Yeah. 
So I suppose the first thing we need to address is about uh, the way it's shot and everything. It's pretty much like watching an episode of the American reality TV show Cops in a way. Yes, definitely one of the first impressions you could get. Yeah. Immediately upon seeing the, the visual way that this movie is presented, I suppose another glib way of putting it is, um, you know, your typical cop, drama movie action movie with cops in america imagine if it was shot like the blair witch project which is why this movie for me was quite a, a struggle to get through because i i've never seen the blair witch project and that's due to the fact that it is done as a found footage style movie because for me i don't like seeing shaky cameras and stuff like that and i see a lot of hollywood movies nowadays where they're doing this realism in like battle sequences where they're doing the shaky cam thing yeah. and i find that very nauseating gives me real migraine seeing that and with this movie it, it is quite difficult to see at times when some of the events that are going on in it are actually taking place because some of it is like done at night low light and stuff like that and then there's shaking cameras but um i suppose you've got to commend the filmmakers for trying something different because I've never seen a movie like this, like a police drama. You can, in my opinion, commend them for trying this uh, experimental style. At first. Mm, mm. Because um, one of the common criticisms you get with found footage movies, apart from the... They, maybe they do it in the marketing or they have a title card at the beginning pretending like it's real found footage. This is the surviving footage of a horrible event that happened. And just, just, please don't stop pretending, please. Mm. But no, what, what it is is that you have to carry... If you're going to have this conceit of um, this is all from the perspective of somebody fil filming this with their camera... You have to commit to that all the way through. You have to keep it going, even if in the narrative you have then have characters going, why are you still filming this? Mm. Or can you get that camera out of my face? Or you're not allowed to film in here. Okay, I'll secretly film it, like mm. I think happens in the movie. Mm. But I can't help but wonder, I don't know if I saw this in an interview or if it's my own suspicions, but um, David Ayer might have um, realised the limitations of um, found footage, so all from the perspective of somebody's camera, and he simply decided to quietly stop trying. Mm. Because, firstly, because there's um, sh overhead shots, like in a proper movie, you know, there's no way Jake Gyllenhaal filmed that, mm. so it's just David Ayer wants to make this bit, this chase look exciting, but he can't do it if it's all from Jake Gyllenhaal's camera. And then later on, there are um, scenes from the perspectives of the gangs, um, the, the, the me Mexican group whose name escapes me, but they're talking in their car, and the girl is like, here, blood, we have to get these beat cops, and here, we have to be quiet-like, and... Um, and she's filming this? Mm. It, it, are you telling me that somebody decided to turn on their phone and film them having this conversation about this is how we're going to deal with those cops? But then how are we going to know what they're planning? Exactly! <laughs> but the thing is, is, the only way it would work means like you could say that Jake Gyllenhaal then, if he's the one that's in control of the cameras, in theory, you shouldn't see him in the movie at all. You should only hear his voice, right? Because he's the one that's taking care of all this. But then you could also argue that Cameras are being used from within the police cars. Yeah, that's And that also you... from um, within the, the police force in the actual buildings and stuff like you that. You could so. just about get away with that excuse. But do you see what I'm getting at here? That they're really stretching this to the point where it's like I'm starting to regret this idea of um, it's all filmed from Jake Gyllenhaal's camera. Well, this I mean, been... it does, to, it, to say something positive, it does add a sense of intimacy and immediacy to um, the action that's going on and um, that helps but I feel that uh, um, the greater strength in this movie is the chemistry between Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena, their one-to-one -one conversations. Mm. I don't know if it's the close-ups of the um, cameras that um, help with this but I think it's more really to do with their acting. Mm. You get the proper sense of friendship and camaraderie 
between them and their trivial conversations about their life and, ne and Jake Gyllenhaal ribbing Michael Pena with Mexican stereotypes, mm. which of course is all uh, building up to the um, climax. Mm. Mm. We don't want to spoil that. The words we don't want, we, we shouldn't spoil. No. But um, I suppose... But the tension and the build-up is all, is all there. Yeah. Um, before we go on to the actors, I'd like to say that this movie, even though it doesn't come up with any like times or anything like that, this isn't focused as like a uh, real-time uh, movie. It's kind of done over a period of years, right? Because he meets a girl, uh, the uh, Jake Gyllenhaal character, Meets a girl, starts going out of her, then all of a sudden he's getting married and stuff like that, yeah. and he's having kids and stuff. So this must be a good three or four year period. I'm what guessing. over the? Because it doesn't really, there's no really um, clues on it at all. It doesn't say on the internet about no. that, but I think it is because a lot does happen in that time. That probably would make sense. I got more the impression maybe because I was watching it over a single afternoon and the rate of um, succession, the rapid editing and pacing that it felt mm. it felt like a few weeks, mm. maybe up to a month. But mm. um, but do you want to talk about the the realism that's done in this movie? Because the the violence is very realistic. The way that the the gang shootings are, it's not like oh, like these typical action movies where someone gets shot, still walking I, around, I or got I got explosions better, yeah. or, or explosions in cars and stuff like that. It's not like that at all. It's very realistic. Like you know, people are getting injured and dying or whatever. Although there is a very strange scene in the movie in which one character, if I recall, um, he's a cop. And he gets a knife in the eye. Yeah. Um, that actor, we should quickly say, um, he is the new Hellboy. Hellboy, yes. Which at the time of recording, I haven't seen, but I definitely plan to see it within the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, I thought that was quite weird. That I was like, when I saw the Hellboy picture, I was like, I recognise that face. And I was like, it's him. I, I saw him get stabbed in the eye. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, what do you think about the realism of the violence and stuff? Well, again, it's down to the way that it's all... F I know shaky cam equals nausea, not just for you, but for a lot of people. But that helps with the, the tension and the drama and the um, desperation. I mean, it's obvious. I mean, it's cliche and tiresome. But there is something to be said about, oh, no, we're getting attacked. Ah, what's happening? We have to run away. Mm. But that, but also... The acting, like I say, from the um, um, principal um, people involved, like Jake Gyllenhaal, when he goes into the fire to rescue people and he's coughing and he's getting ill and um, it feels like this is a proper fire um, emergency. That, that tells a lot about these characters, that particular scene, because in a way, Brian and Miguel are kind of... Um, they're show offs, aren't they? They're trying to do. They're trying to be the super cops, aren't they? Because they're trying to show off to their superiors and, yeah. and and their buddies who are the cops. But the with the one who plays Hellboy, uh, Van Van Hauser, I think his character name is. Yeah. Um, he's constantly like, "Get that camera out of my face!" And you know, yeah. we're going to report you because you're not doing your job right. You you you're interfering and you're doing things wrong. You need to let. The which is kind. Do. Which is kind of a. Or I want to say a cliche in these cop movies that you get the antagonistic one. You're like you're rookies. You don't know what you're doing. But the, the the supporting actors you've got in this movie. I mean, I can mention Jake Gyllenhaal's girlfriend in this, Anna Kendrick, who's famous for the Pitch Perfect movies. And is as the girlfriend is more grounded and realistic and convincing than you would then i would have ex i'm sorry i would have expected from comedic actress anna kendrick and then you've got america ferreira who's obviously famous for ugly betty and superstore um she's playing one of the cops and obviously as we said um the hellboy actor or, uh, i just call him hellboy actor but his name apparently is david harbour yeah and then we've also got frank grillo who i didn't realize was in this too because frank grillo um is famous for the purge sequels and he was in captain america winter soldier i, I like him a lot and yet in this he kind of feels very underused because he's kind of like the the chief in charge of the police yeah and he kind of like you know you guys keep fucking up you're gonna Get, put my ass on the line and stuff like that. Or go to a macho dialogue like that, yeah. And that's one thing I do want to know, and I don't know how you feel about this, but um, the problem I have with this movie is the level of language. In my opinion, I, I, I swear all the time, but when I swear, I'm very much jokey banter, whatever. This movie 
every word nearly is a swear word and it feels very what's the word would you say gratuitous gratuitous yeah like gratuitous nudity it's, it just feels like it's there just because it, it it it's very difficult to watch a movie like this and then other people go around and go what the hell movie are you watching with all that bad language and it makes me feel very uncomfortable did you get that yeah um, i did okay i did i mean what do you think about the language in it um well do we I suppose it's trying to, I don't know if it's a genuine attempt to try and convey this is what it's like on the on the Los Angeles police force, or if that's just David Ayer going, this, I'm um, swearing equals maturity. Well, the thing is, is that if they're cops, in theory, it's like any workplace, you have to do it properly. You're not supposed to swear in your jobs. So well, they're, well, about. well, I was going to say, do they do it in front of, the public and they're but yeah they, they do they do so yeah so it, it is a difficult one um but yeah that that's one of my gripes of the movie um but like i say the acting is very good um the story it's as i say it's very much spaced over a period of time so um but for a movie that costs between seven and fifteen million dollars for it to make nearly sixty million dollars that's an impressive figure and that right there is why found footage movies do so well, even though they come out with the same old cliches of, like I said, it's real found footage, or, oh no, there's something in the basement, we're going to die, ah, they were never seen again. Which is, I'm not saying that's what happens in this movie. The, we Found footage movies can be really cliched and repetitive, but because they're so cheap to make, like this one, they can be seen as an earner. But do you think that the poster is misleading because it just shows the two characters? There's no hint of any like pocket camera or anything like that to give a clue that this is found footage. Because yeah. I, when I saw the poster, I had no idea this was found footage. It, it, it could be misleading, but then I want to make the argument that Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena's friendship and camaraderie, that's the heart of the movie. Yes, yeah, it, it is a weird one because when you're when you're watching it, I don't know if this is just me again, because of the level of language and the way that the the characters interact with each other, I'm not really rooting for any character in this movie. I just think they're all unlikable, with the exception of maybe uh, Michael Pena's character, Miguel. He's the only one that, to me, is likable. Even Jake Gyllenhaal's character is very cocky and... He irritates me a lot in this movie, his character, because he's constantly winding up his partners and stuff like that and showing off. But Michael Pena's like, I'm the family man. You know, you need to settle down. You need to meet a nice girl. You know, mm. have a family. You can't be risking your life all the time and stuff. And he's trying to be the voice of reason. Yeah. Whereas Gyllenhaal is kind of like, because apparently he's a, an ex-Marine. Uh, so it's a case of um, he, he will just, you know, take risks and do things like that all the time, if I recall. Well, it... Well, everything you say does pay off in the end, which we won't give away. Mm. Um, it offered some kind of defence. I, I get what you're saying about the main characters, but one thing that I liked, one central thing that I took out of this movie is that um, it's a cop action movie where the cops in general are the good guys here. Be this being David Ayer, be this being the training day guy, I went into this movie fully expecting it to be about corruption or drugs. It turns out that, um, I don't know, David Harbour is um, helping the Mexican cartel or something. No, no, that never happens. This is a group of people out there on the beat doing their job um, out to serve and protect, which is what policemen should be. And I... Uh, I found that uh, refreshing. Um, a little trivial uh, thing in re doing research for this uh, review, I found an article about um, the a police department was um, secretly taped or caught surveillance in the hope of exposing a corruption or something. And the, the, all the, the results they got was a lot of police of real life police officers saying that their favorite movie is end of watch wow so quoting the the opening line from jake gyllenhaal about uh, i am the line between order and chaos or whatever it is that he says and i thought oh that's a really uplifting thing you know people are taking away from this you know a positive 
um, message about cops being heroes or trying to be heroes, even if they're, you know, being cocky about it. And then I, at the end of the article, I saw a great big update saying this was our website's April Fool's joke of 2016. <laughs> and I went, oh, I was really disappointed about that. I could have, I'm, I mean, I'm still technically doing this story anyway, but I, I like to hope, I like to think that... Um, maybe give it a few years this came out in 2012 i don't know yeah. um that uh, this i don't want to say this will be a future classic but if we can take away from this a movie about um cops as protagonists with proper motivations and realistic feelings and relationships and jobs then um i can sort of commend this movie is there anything else you want to sum up on this um well that was arguably one of my big um send-offs but I'll, I'll, as a movie should you go and see it um as a curiosity because my biggest bug there is that um it's one of those found footage movies that doesn't commit to it it starts off being this is all going to be from the camera and no it isn't because you have to establish the bad guy's point of view you have to establish some action and i find that really annoying when it comes to found footage shaky camera movies when you just give up or it you can tell on screen you're not even trying anymore and i got that sort of sense of stylistically from a technical directing point of view david air you're not even trying anymore but it's jake gyllenhaal and michael pena's um acting and camaraderie as characters that really drive this film and sell this film for me um like yeah Check, check this out if you're curious. Just don't expect it to be a um, proper, true example of the found footage genre. This is where um, the good thing about this channel is that um, we say our opinions on things. So I take it from you that you really enjoyed this movie. I um, liked it. For me, I was kind of completely opposite. So... I'm not slagging it off or anything like that, but for me, it was an uncomfortable watch, mainly because of the swear, the swearing and the found footage and the shaky cams and stuff like that. It's not something I do very well watching those kind of movies. So it's not really for me is all I can say. Um, I think the acting's great. I think commend the director for, for doing the, uh, something quite unique. And no doubt, you know, in, in my eyes, I see it as... It's basically a big version of Cops, only you see more behind the scenes. Um, for me, um, Michael Pena's character, like I say, was the one that stood out as the likeable character. And I've always been a big fan of him. But to be honest, I'd rather watch him in Chips than this. <laughs> Another you movie where should, he plays a cop. You should be very careful about that statement. <laughs> you are saying that... Chips is a more entertaining movie than this. And you are prepared to stand by that. Yeah, I'll stand by it. Okay, it's your funeral. <laughs> so, I suppose that's end of watch, really. Yeah, that's everything, oh, oh. and I can hear it. Oh, this is spinner time. Okay. okay, so, um, without further ado, let's spin that wheel. It's landed oh. on Patreon. I so we don't have any patrons. Oh. So I guess this means I get a week off, or do you have an idea? Not so fast, not so fast. Oh, not damn so fast. it. I was hoping Well, for a we've got break. a choice here. Because it's already spun, we can either spin it again, or mm. how about, how about, as a one-off, given that we haven't got any Patreon subscribers at the moment, and it could change. At the moment. Support, yeah. How about, um, given that we've got Matt's picks, would you like to pick the next movie we can talk about, either from the list already on the Twister Spinner, or do you have something in mind that you want to talk about? Something uh, does come uh, does come to mind. Uh, it's, uh, it's, well, f uh, from our um, days, uh, this is because of our days at school and we talked about it then, so maybe we can get something out of this. Okay. Uh, cannibal. The musical. Okay, that was pretty quickly thought out. 
I assume it was on your mind then. <laughs> um, well, it's uh, so, um, something I was meaning to talk to you about anyway. So, so um, is that the South Park guys, right? The South Park guys, yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah. So the next one we're going to do then, I guess, is Cannibal the Musical. Andrew's pick. So don't blame me. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So um, we'll be looking forward to that one. So. Um, Thanks very much everybody for checking out this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this with all your friends. Check out Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for all the updates that we've got regarding this series, Andrew's series at the yeah. movies with. And um, we've also got some uh, solo videos of mine and music reviews coming up as well slowly. So yeah, thank you very much everybody and all the very best. And all I can say is Andrew, any final statement? Oh no, there's a shootout going on. Ah, what's going on? Ah, oh, don't do this, man. Ah, no, I'm not going to make it. Ah. They were never heard from again. Roll credits. Bye-bye.